As we've mentioned in the previous episode, while Zhuang Xi was recognized as one of the five sage kings of prehistoric China, his image is not really one of being benevolent and kind and fatherly. Well, in my mind, at least personally, Zhuang Xi would fit more into an image of being a hard ruler, you know, a heavy-handed and um, a clenched fist kind of a ruler. Maybe it was needed at that time, seeing that the people were newly assimilated. But this style of rule and governance brought with it its own set of uh, problems. Like we mentioned in the previous episode, Zhuang Xi, the Black Emperor, um, forced the assimilated people to give up their culture and traditions and even their religions and their uh, worship practices. So, um, of course, this would foment a certain level of uh, unhappiness or uh, disgruntlement uh, amongst the newly assimilated people. Now, that's what I guess um, sparked off the events that will happen in today's story. Hello and welcome to the Chain Smoking Writers channel, where we share the myths, legends and histories of the Chinese people, from the first creator gods to the last imperial dynasty. More than 6,000 years of stories, one video at a time. And if you would like to join us on this journey through time, um, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon, so we'll be updated whenever a new video drops. Now, the protagonist of today's story is a man named Kong Kong. Now, Kong Kong was a descendant of Yan Di, and it was said that he was born with the head and the upper torso of a human and the lower half body of a snake. And his hair was a bright red that paired well with his fiery temper. Now, due to his mastery and understanding of how water works and how uh, bodies of water behave, Kong Kong was uh, considered the lord of all rivers, streams, swamps, lakes, and seas. And during the battle of Ban Quan against uh, Huang Di and the Huaxia people, Kong Kong actually uh, contributed actively. He offered great assistance to Yan Di's armies by sending out great floods to drown the armies of Huang Di. Now, after the Battle of Ban Quan, where Yan Di ultimately lost, uh, Kong Kong and his son Ho Tu led their people to settle in an area which is now around the northern parts of Henan. And the both of them, they were actually accomplished leaders who were well versed in agricultural techniques and technologies of the time and contributed much to the progress of their own peoples. Now, the pair of them were especially knowledgeable in uh, irrigation techniques and technologies of the time. And seeing that they are clan lands set on uh, extremely uneven ground where the low-lying farmlands were prone to flooding uh, while the higher ground often suffered droughts and uh, did not receive enough uh, rainfall or water for effective uh, crop growing. So seeing that these were the problems, Kong Kong actually proposed uh, leveling out the farmlands by taking soil and earth from the higher ground to fill up the lowlands. Now, the implementation of this plan uh, greatly improved the irrigation of the farms of his people and increased the area of uh, farmable land for his clans. And the people loved him for the benefits that he brought them. Now, apart from leveling out the ground, Kong Kong also came up with a plan to build levees around flood-prone areas to regulate the flow of waters into the farmlands for irrigation. And thus, it alleviated the problem of uh, frequent floods during the rain season and droughts during the dry seasons. So, because of his understanding and the mastery over the behavior of water, the people felt that he had lordship over all bodies of water and uh, future generations will actually recognize him as the god of waters. Now, when Tuan Shi ascended to the throne as the new sovereign of man, as the Black Emperor, uh, he did improve the lives of the people under his rule. However, the treatment of the assimilated clans, the assimilated people, were far from kind, if I were to say so. And apart from forcibly changing their cultures and traditions and, you know, 
uh, basically eradicating their worship practices and their religion. According to some stories, Tuan Shi actually ordered the son to only travel over the lands of his people and thus giving the original people of Huang Ti's tribes um, all the sunlight and the warmth that they need for effective agriculture while plunging the rest of the lands uh, into darkness. And as Kong Kong was a descendant of Yan Ti and he participated actively in the Battle of Ban Quan, uh, Tuan Shi was especially intolerable of him. You know, always finding the smallest excuse to castigate him, to you know, put him down, to you know, basically just nitpick on everything that Kong Kong was doing. Uh, in fact, I, I guess Tuan Shi just wanted to get rid of this thorn in his side once and for all, if it was ever possible. And therefore, uh, you could imagine how annoyed Tuan Shi was when news of uh, Kong Kong's contribution and improvements reached him. You know, and news of Kong Kong gaining the respect and building a reputation for himself. Zhuang Xi was like really jumping on his feet when he heard all these stories. Because to him, as the sovereign of man, him and him alone uh, was entitled to the love and respect of the people. And when Zhuang Xi found out that Kong Kong was trying to level a mountain to fill in the lowlands without, you know, as much as a heads up or seeking his permission for it, he was furious. I mean, who was Kong Kong to undertake such a huge endeavor without, without his blessings? You know, in Tuan Shi's eyes, this was an open challenge to his authority. This was a slap in the face for him. So, to stop the people from, you know, moving forward with this plan, with Kong Kong's plan, Tuan Shi came up with an excuse uh, that, you know, leveling a mountain will greatly displease the gods and bring their wrath down upon the population. So the two engage in a war of words in front of the populace, you know, each trying to convince the people to their side. Now, in a battle of strength, Zhuang Shi would definitely be no match for, you know, the, the uh, war veteran Kong Kong. However, in a war of words, Zhuang uh, Shi is a much shrewder, orator that uh, Kong Kong could ever dream to be. So Tuan Shi uh, preyed on the superstitions of the people and impressed upon them the horrors that would befall them uh, if they should incur the wrath of the gods and the deities. Uh, not to mention the large numbers of mountain spirits and demons that they would unleash if they decided to go ahead with Kong Kong's plan. The people, uh, at that time being mainly naive and in awe of Zhuang Shi's uh, power and authority, uh, quickly agreed with him. And uh, they, they, they castigated Kong Kong for almost bringing this unimaginable disaster and catastrophe to the people. And although misunderstood and uh, maligned, Kong Kong believed that his proposal, his idea, was the right way forward. It was the right direction to bring benefits to the people. However, because of his fiery temper, uh, in a feat of fury, Kong Kong just went up to the heavenly realms, went to the heavenly courts to you know, find support for his ideas and himself. And there were deities up there that were you know, basically already disgruntled with Zhuang Shi's uh, tyrannical rule. And so they backed Kong Kong and you know, soon this whole thing blew up bigger and bigger and it came to a point where the deities and some of the deities and the gods uh, felt that it would be better if Kong Kong was a sovereign of man. So they built an army uh, of deities and Kong Kong's followers to forcibly take the throne from Zhuang Shi. Now this hastily assembled army uh, quickly gained strength and power and marched on to Zhuang Shi's capital to try to overthrow him. However, Zhuang Shi was not in the least bit worried about it. Um, he led the 72 beacons of the capital city to summon reinforcements from all over the land to come to his aid. And he personally led the, the imperial guards to uh, defend the capital city from this uh, attack. And thus, the battle for the future of man uh, was quickly joined by all sides. And, um, the fighting went on for days and nights, you know, from the realm of man to the realm of gods, you know, up in the skies to down on the ground. The battles raged on for days and days. 
uh, bodies littered the battlefield and blood flowed like rivers and streams dying the entire land red. As the battle raged on, the armies of Zhuang Shi, the Black Emperor, uh, grew bigger and bigger as reinforcements from across the land you know, came to join him. While Kong Kong's warriors took heavy casualties and began to dwindle in numbers, uh, his commanders were either killed or heavily wounded in the fighting, in the thick of fighting. It soon became clear that Kong Kong had no choice but to you know, retreat and escape from the battlefield. So after days of running and fighting and running and fighting, uh, Kong Kong arrived at the foot of Puzhou Shan or Puzhou Mountain. Uh, this was in the northwest of the realm. And 13 warriors was all that was left of the army that fought bravely alongside Kong Kong. Now Puzhou Shan or Puzhou Mountain was one of the pillars of the world and it rose straight out of the ground with sheer cliff faces on all sides and there was no way around it. And being boxed in on all sides by the enemy with no chance and no hope in hell of escape, Kong Kong was resigned to the fate that was awaiting him. However, he refused to go down without a fight. Now in his last act of defiance, uh, Kong Kong who was exhausted you know, from the days and nights of fighting, got onto his battle-weary dragon and they flew up to the midpoint of, the, of this uh, mountain. And there, with a final roar, you know, Kong Kong took his dragon and they charged full speed with their anger, their frustration and their disappointments. They charged full speed into the mountain. And a great crack was heard both on earth and in the heavens. A crack that sounded like no other before. And the mountain broke right through in the middle. Now with such a vital supporting pillar breaking in half, um, the sky and the land lost its balance and it started to topple over towards the southeast. Now the celestial bodies all you know slid across the sky and into the eastern oceans and from then on they had to you know climb out of the eastern seas to start their journey across the sky before setting in the west and all the rivers and streams and bodies of water on land uh, altered their courses they will start flowing eastward towards the lowlands before finally emptying out into the eastern seas now although Kong Kong and his followers ultimately lost the battle or lost the war um, I'm sure they gave the ruling classes they gave uh, Zhuang Xi and his uh, people a great big fright uh, he proved that even in the face of absolute authority, uh, it was always a worthy cause to fight for a genuine belief, to fight for your convictions. He showed that with enough passion and effort, one could try, at least try, to change the established order of things. Now, in recognition of his defiance and his dogged belief in his cause, and of course his uh, mastery and understanding of water, Kong Kong was deified by future generations uh, as the god of waters after his sacrifice. And his son, Hou Tu, who perished with him uh, during the, in the fighting, was also deified by the people as the god of the earth or god of soil. Now, memorials were actually built uh, for Kong Kong, although nowhere near the capital. Memorials were built uh, in remembrance of him in the far north, in the northern wilderness, you know, facing south. And the archers, interestingly, archers from then on never shot their arrows towards the north in respect to his might and his courage and his conviction. Now, I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I enjoyed telling it. And if you did, please smash the like button. It would really help the channel out. It will help me out as well. And now, uh, let's move on to some personal thoughts of mine on this story. Now, I wouldn't call this uh, much of a bonus facts or trivial, but more of my personal thoughts on this story and what it might have signified. I mean, if we take the mythological route, uh, I guess this story would happen uh, after Zhuang Xu took the throne and before the severing of connection between the realm of men and realm of gods. 
I believe this might have actually been one of the catalysts for Zhuang Xu making the decision to severe the connections, seeing that you know there were gods and deities that was on the Gong Gong side in this uh, fight. Now, of course, if we are going to look at this uh, story and analyze it from a more historical or academic point of view, uh, of course, uh, you wouldn't have you know dragons and pillars of heavens and stuff like that. But I do believe this is a story that you know most probably came from prehistoric times, uh, which depicted or told of events of uh, a power struggle within the early Huaxia people, the early consolidated Huaxia people. So uh, most probably it would have been a rebellion or a revolution or something like that from the uh, oppressed, assimilated people of that time. Um, most probably Gong Gong was a respectable leader of these people, being the descendant of Yan Di and having a reputation among the people. He would most probably have been a leader of this uh, uprising. Unfortunately, it failed and they perished. Now from this story, I would also presume, uh, in a roundabout way, I would presume that uh, it is an illustration that the people of the Shenlong tribes uh, actually had a better grasp of uh, agricultural techniques and irrigation techniques as compared to the Shenyuan tribe uh, of Huang Di. And this would kind of fit into the narrative so far that the Shenlong tribes under Yan Di were the developers of uh, early, early agriculture. And this story, although it's a myth, uh, would lend credence to this uh, school of thought. Now, another point that this uh, story illustrated, I believe, uh, is a mindset of the Chinese people. You know, the, the, the psyche, the mindset that if it is a worthy cause, the Chinese will go all out to fight for it, you know. Consequences be them. You know, if I have to pay with my life, I will do it. And this is a common thread that you can see throughout all the historical stories you, 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 you hear about in uh, Chinese history, you know, legends, mythology. This is a common thread. And I believe in a way it has shaped the, the Chinese people uh, to have this uh, respect and admiration of people who would give their all for a worthy cause. Now, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video as much as I enjoyed making it. And um, if you would like to support this channel and support this work on Patreon, uh, the links are in the description box below. It will really help the channel out. It will help to pay the bills and help to pay for the gear. So if you can, the links are in the description box below. And if you would just like to you know, connect with me on other social media platforms and uh, find out what's going on behind the scenes and stuff like that. Um, all the links are in the description box as well. And if you have anything to say, you know, have any feedback or any uh, criticism of the content and of the production of the channel, you know, feel free to let me know in the comment section as well. Uh, or if you just like to, you know, have a chat or something, you know, leave a message in the comment section. We have some uh, pretty interesting banter from time to time. And I do personally go through the comment section and reply to uh, all of them as much as possible. I guess um, the other thing would be subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the bell icon, and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next episode.